Before I begin, I would like to express my gratitude for all of you. Thank you for helping me surpass 100 subscribers. While this might not seem like much for others, it's an important milestone for me and it couldn't have happened without your continued viewership and support. I look forward to reaching greater milestones in the future, but for now, I'm grateful for making it this far. So, thank you once again and I hope you enjoyed today's video. From stubbing your toe on an inconveniently placed table, to voicing your displeasure with the manner in which government officials are running the economy, there's certainly no shortage of circumstances and events to complain about. While stubbing one's toe and the economy are drastically different in influence and magnitude, if they're worth complaining about, then people will do just that. Complaining is something we all do to varying extents, and what we complain about differs from one person to the next. There's some overlap, of course, like the economy being a general topic of frustration, but usually each person's complaints stem from dissatisfaction over their particular situation, what pain they're suffering from, how their relationships aren't going well, and so on. Irrespective of reason, complaining often retains a markedly negative connotation, especially if someone complains excessively. A remark that you've more than likely heard at some point is, nobody likes a whiner or a complainer. Indeed, would you tolerate being surrounded by someone who's constantly dissatisfied, who doesn't count their blessings, or only sees the negative side of everyone and everything? Probably not. I know I wouldn't, but with that said, are there situations where complaining is necessary and legitimate? Additionally, even if there are acceptable circumstances where raising grievances would be recommended, should we refrain from complaining about anything? Or, in the very least, perhaps we should attempt to limit how much we complain due to the adverse impacts the endeavor has on our mental and physical states. Today's discussion will primarily explore the psychological effects of complaining and attempt to determine whether we should complain at all. It must be admitted that while there are circumstances where complaining would be appropriate, seeking to limit how frequent you complain and what you complain about is a worthwhile endeavor, especially if you wish to avoid a perpetually negative state of mind. To begin, we should define our terms so we understand how they're utilized. The Cambridge Dictionary remarks that, to complain is, quote, to say that something is wrong or not satisfactory, end quote. Meanwhile, it defines grievance as, quote, a complaint or a strong feeling that you have been treated unfairly, end quote. The two terms are synonymous, but with grievance there appears to be a more serious undertone. When a formal grievance is filed against someone, for example, there is a palpable sense that a true injustice has been committed, whereas for a complaint, it could be as simple and inconsequential as grumbling about the weather. Nonetheless, context is important as both terms can express that a severe wrongdoing has taken place. Digressing now, how does complaining affect us? Unsurprisingly, in an overwhelmingly negative manner, even under circumstances where we're rebuking evident injustice. On a micro scale, when we complain about minor affairs like a family member not doing the dishes or taking out the trash on time, or here's another relatable one, our food not arriving as fast as we expect at a restaurant. It's an inherently negative endeavor. It affects the others around us because they're often turned off by our grumblings, especially if they're perceived to be unjustified, essentially akin to that of complaining for the sake of complaining. Furthermore, it negatively impacts our person because all we're focusing on is our dissatisfaction. Depending on what we're dissatisfied about, sometimes the accompanying unfavorable mental state lasts for an entire day. On other occasions, it's weeks, months, or even years. When I get frustrated and complain about circumstances, I frequently discover, after calming down, that it wasn't worth it. Voicing my grievances and frustrations, especially over something I couldn't control, didn't bring me any satisfaction. If anything, Complaining detracts from my peace of mind, something that has already become increasingly difficult to maintain as I grow older. On a macro scale, when we raise grievances about significant matters, it's ostensibly the case that we're still left feeling unsatisfied. I discussed this notion in an earlier video of mine titled, What is Justice? Here, I outlined how justice and revenge are inextricably linked to one another. When we demand justice, we ultimately seek to enact some type of vengeance on wrongdoers. Now, 
There's nothing fundamentally wrong with this concept, as those who perform heinous acts should be punished. My point in highlighting this phenomenon is that we cannot stop thinking about it, even after justice has been served for the crime. Complaining, justice, and revenge are inherently retroactive endeavors, adamantly clinging to the past and stubbornly resistant to moving onward into the future. When you ponder about injustices you have suffered, for example, they'll always be there, and they'll always be a part of you no matter how much you try to let go. In spite of this fact, complaining about these circumstances is certainly a way to never let it go. I'm not suggesting you forgive and forget, more like forgive and don't forget, but also don't let the past hold you back. Don't let it prevent you from creating a significantly better present and future. So, while there are situations where complaining is important and necessary, like criticizing a tyrannical regime or filing a grievance against an employer for wrongful dismissal, there are also situations where it won't be constructive. When you're stuck in traffic, complaining about it won't alleviate the situation. Instead, your grumblings will most notably increase your dissatisfaction and anger. When you're amped up like that, anything and everything tends to set you off. Furthermore, it's easier to make irrational decisions when you're angry. So, in order to avoid making foolish choices that come back to haunt you later, it's best to avoid feeding that dragon. Limiting how often you complain and what you complain about is a good place to start. All right, we realize how complaining can detrimentally impact us. It'll increase our dissatisfaction and anger, which evidently distorts our perspective. Constantly complaining will lead to a negative state of mind, where all we see is gray. It'll also impact our relationships with others, as nobody will want to be around us. One of the patrons at my workplace has a fitting comment for this. He remarks, quote, Why complain? Nobody listens, anyway. End quote. Indeed, and on the surface he could be advising that you should never complain. However, if we utilize another perspective, what could be noted instead is that nobody will listen if you perpetually complain. If you've amassed a reputation for being a nag, a whiner, or a complainer, then of course nobody will listen. It's comparable to the boy who cried wolf. He did it so often that nobody took him seriously because it was a hoax every time. When a wolf actually came to town, nobody believed the boy once again, and the sheep ended up getting eaten. The point of this metaphorical illustration is that you should pick your battles, as they say. Choose your moments when a grievance will be justified. You should endeavor to limit how often you complain, and about what, not only to preserve your state of mind, but also to preserve your relationships. If you have justified grievances against your family members, raise the issue in a constructive manner, such that the rift between you and them doesn't get enlarged. More than necessary, if it's inevitable. Be as diplomatic as you can in raising the issue. It'll certainly produce better results than firing all your complaints at once in a harsh, accusatory manner. I'm not advising that you let everything slide, or to not criticize reprehensible actions. However, when we truly ponder our actions, we'll find that many of the things we grumble about are simply not worth it. At the end of the day, will it really make a difference if our food came a little later than expected at the restaurant, or if the bus arrived a few minutes behind schedule? Probably not. Therefore, we should let go of those relatively inconsequential dissatisfactions, so we aren't always in a perpetually negative state of mind. To conclude, a friend of mine posed a thought experiment a while back. He asked, quote, Would you rather be stuck in a room full of braggers or complainers? End quote. Initially, since I can't stand braggarts, I was about to remark that I'd rather be in a room full of complainers. However, on second thought, I realized that the boasters will eventually run out of things to brag about. Meanwhile, the complainers will always find something to grumble about, no matter how inconsequential it seems. So, should you never complain about anything? Perhaps not, as there will be legitimate grievances that will arise at some point. However, you'll have to pick and choose what's worth the effort demanded by actualizing the complaint. Additionally, you'll have to ask yourself if the mental and physical toll ultimately justifies the action. You may complain all you want, but do so at your own peril.